what this video is going to be about. Initially, I wanted to create a very simple video about decoupling capacitors. Okay? Decoupling capacitors are the capacitors what you normally place close to the power pins. And uh, I wanted to create a video which would answer uh, the questions what many people keep asking me. So what kind of value to use for the coupling capacitors? I wanted to create a video which would explain what is the best position or where you should place the coupling capacitors. And I wanted to create a video which would tell you what is the best way how to connect these decoupling capacitors. However, it turned out to be much, much more complicated. <laughs> and um, that's what this video is going to be about. This video may not directly answer these three questions, but this video is even better. This video will help you to understand what is important when you are asking these three questions. So in this video, you will learn all the most important essentials, what you need to know to understand what is actually happening on your board between power supply and the chip. What is happening here in this space? And once you understand what is happening there, then it will help you to make better schematic. It will help you to understand what capacitors you may need to use for decoupling. It will help you to understand what is the best position in your specific layout to place the decoupling capacitors. And also it will help you to understand why and what is important about uh, how to connect your decoupling capacitors. So I really hope you will enjoy this video. I really hope you will find it interesting. And here it is. To be more specific, first we are going to have a look at the board which we are going to use as an example to learn about this topic. Then we will do some uh, simulations of the board. We will have a look at the results of the simulation. We will uh, explain and we will try to understand what we can see in these results and how they can be useful. Then uh, we will compare it with real measurement and also we will have a look at the real waveforms on the real board. Uh, I'm not the only one who is going to help you to understand these uh, topics. In this video, I'm going to include short clips from my call with Eric. He will help you to explain uh, the most complicated topics around this uh, decoupling and power distribution. And also, I, uh, I'm going to include uh, short clips from my call with Florian. Florian helped me to measure the real board. So all the real measurements, what we will see in this video, they were done by Florian. Okay, uh, now we can uh, have a closer look at the board, what we are going to talk about. Let's go to Altium Designer. Uh, this is the board. And uh, what is most interesting for us is this microcontroller, especially VCC pin of this microcontroller. We are going to have a closer look how power is delivered to this VCC pin of the microcontroller. When we go into PCB, here we can see the big microcontroller. Controller. This is the VCC pin. So uh, what is connected to this VCC pin? The uh, decoupling capacitor, when I zoom in here, this is the microcontroller, here is the VCC pin, and this is 
the 100 nanofarad decoupling capacitor placed very close to this VCC pin. Then uh, VCC pin is also connected to this uh, little bit bigger capacitor than microfarad capacitor and the VCC pin is also connected through ferrite bead through this one it's connected through ferrite bead to the power power of the board is uh, uh, delivered through this micro USB connector okay so uh, this whole board is powered through this USB micro connector which is here it's powered from this uh, power pin of the USB micro connector uh, there is a big filter on the input you can see this is a big capacitor 100 microfarad capacitor here is inductor and big microfarad uh, 100 microfarad capacitor and then from uh, here it uh, basically continues to this switch which is here and uh, through zero ohm resistor we will connect the power from the USB micro connector we will connect it to this plus 5V slash 3V3 and this plus 5V slash 3V3 is then used to power our VCC pin through this ferrite bit so when I click here this is the plus 5V slash 3V3 you can see it is connected to our bit this is the bit and then here is the 10 microfarad capacitor and here is the 100 nanofarad decoupling capacitor okay it's important you understand uh, how our circuit is connected and how the placement and layout is done on this board in this video we will mostly speak about the part which is here so uh, about the uh, 100 nanofarad capacitor vcc pin 10 microfarad capacitor and the ferrite bit that's what we are going to mostly talk about about this part of the board here now about this simulation last time when i was creating a similar video many people asked me what kind of software i'm using so I'm using this advanced design system uh, software. It is from Keysight. And uh, I would like to thank you very much to Keysight uh, for providing me the license for this software so I could create this video. Why we would like to simulate or what do we need from this simulation? We would like to see this PDN impedance graph and uh, also I will show you this current density that's what you can see here uh, current density will help you to maybe visualize a little bit better what is happening on your board but this uh, PDN impedance that's uh, what you can see here this is the graph and this is what is very important for us to understand what the VCC pin of our microcontroller, how this VCC pin sees the uh, um, way how the power is going to be delivered to this pin. So this is why we would like to run this simulation. Uh, First, I'm going to explain a little bit about how to set up this kind of simulation because uh, maybe when you will be doing some uh, simulations, uh, it can be helpful for you. And also, if you have never done any simulation, uh, this can give you some kind of idea what you may want to set up when a simulation like this is done. Very quickly. As you can see, we are going to run AC analysis. For this, we have to set the power supply, which is called VRM. We have to, we have to set the power pins, uh, which are called sinks. And we have to set the models of the components, which are used in the, uh, mm, which we have to 
used in this simulation. So these are the components which are basically connected to the uh, power net what we are going to simulate. Uh, the power supply, in our case, it is uh, the uh, micro USB connector. That's what you can see set here. And all the power coming into our board is coming through this pin one of the USB connector. When I double click uh, here, these are the settings of our power supply. So basically from the USB connector, we are receiving five volts and these are some other parameters of the power supply. Now, the sink in our case, the one what we are interested about is the uh, VCC pin of the microcontroller. Again, that's what we can see here. So this is the VCC uh, pin of the microcontroller. It is set as sync together with the ground pins uh, of the microcontroller. When I double click on the parameters of this sync, uh, you can see it's set to sync 10 amps. Okay, this is not maybe a real number. The microcontroller will never consume 10 amps. But for the, uh, for the kind of simulation what we are doing here, this uh, number is not really important. There are some other parameters of the thing what you can set. You can see it here. I'm going to close this. And uh, then uh, here are the component models. So if you remember in uh, the path between the uh, USB, uh, between the micro USB connector and our VCC pin, there are some components. So there is this zero ohm resistor. It is this one, uh, which is here. And as you can see, the model for this zero ohm resistor is very, very simple. Uh, it is just a resistor with value 0 0.01 ohm. When I double click on the model of this uh, two micro two inductor, it is this inductor which is in the big filter up here. Again, this is a very simple model. You can see it is just a inductor, 2.2 microhenry inductor, plus uh, some very low resistor, 0 0.08 resistor in series with the inductor. So this is the very simple model of this inductor. Uh, next, uh, what we need for our simulation is this ferrite bead. It is, uh, it is this one, which is here. So we have to set the model for this ferrite bead and include it in our simulation. I downloaded the model from, uh, from the component uh, manufacturer website. Then here is a 100 nanofarad capacitor. It is this one which is here and uh, the model for 100 nanofarad capacitor it was very simple because I could find it in database which is uh, provided together with this software so the software has database of components I'm going to show you so when I click here uh, you will see there are a lot of different components so what you can do you can try to find a specific component and you can then simply then add this component uh, model into your simulation. That's uh, what is here. Okay. For the uh, 10 microfarad, exactly same. I was able to find the model in the database of the software. Uh, here are the parameters and uh, 100 microfarad capacitor. I downloaded the model from the uh, component manufacturer website. Then uh, here are some options for the simulation. I uh, set the frequencies, what I would like to uh, run during the simulation. I also set this, and I think I also set this. And that's everything what I set for the simulation. Once you set all these uh, once you set the VRM things and the component models, then simply run the simulation. And once the uh, simulation is finished, then you can check the results here. And this is where the fun begins. So first we are going to have a look at the results of this current density. That's what we can see here. 
and especially we are interested to see the simulation here in this place okay so this is the uh, decoupling capacitor here is the vcc pin this is 10 microfarad capacitor and this is the bit i'm going to uh, start uh, this uh, simulation or the results of the simulation from frequency 0 um, 0.01 megahertz uh, basically what we are going to do we are going to have a look at the currents uh, flowing in this area for different frequencies okay so if we would be running for example uh, this 0 0.01 megahertz frequency uh, through these uh, tracks how it would look how the current would look and uh, as you can see the blue it means there are almost no currents and red it means there will be high currents so for very low frequency it's going to be some kind of distributed there are no places with super high currents in this area but notice what is going to happen when I keep increasing the frequency. So I'm going to increase the frequency. There are some changes. Okay. You can see the colors are changing a little bit. Notice now what is happening now. Wow. Okay. For frequency 5 megahertz, everything is red. And then when we continue uh, rising the frequency, it goes to normal. Then here is something really red, but that's not what we are going to talk about in this video. Here, there is everything blue. And when we are increasing the frequency, it is again getting a little bit more red. And this is how it looks for 300 megahertz. When we have a look at the PDN impedance, we will notice that uh, everything was red when we were at this frequency, which is here. So when I use marker and when I select this point, you will notice that in this PDN impedance, there is some special peak at 5 megahertz which is exactly at the point where this simulation looks kind of uh, weird because everything is red so this current density is somehow related to this uh, pdn graph it means this PDN graph is really, really important because it is telling us that it, in these peaks, something is happening on our board. But the question is, what is this PDN impedance about? How this graph is created? What, it, what does it show? Very good question before we start talking about this graph there is one more thing what i would like to show you i would like to show you a real world example how knowing this graph can be useful so what we are going to do uh, we are going to measure real signals on uh, real board okay we are going to connect this real board and we are going to measure the uh, noise on vcc pin and then what we will do we will change the frequency uh, how the outputs of the microcontroller are going to switch on uh, some load and we are going to specially uh, look at the frequencies uh, switching around this peak which is here and we are going to monitor the noise on the vcc pin and we are going to have a look how this peak is going to influence the noise on the vcc pin of the real board 
And as I explained, uh, with these real measurements, Florian is going to help me. So in this first very short clip, Florian is going to explain how this real board is connected. So what okay. I did do then is uh, adding the adding some resistors to the output pins and to ground. It looks like that. Mm -hmm. So there are the five load resistors, 270 ohms, and that will be roughly 8 uh, milliamps, so roughly 40 milliamps in total. What Florian did, he connected five 270 ohm resistors between five output pins of this microcontroller and ground. And then he was uh, switching the output pins between 5 volts and 0 at different frequencies. So he was switching the voltage on the output of these output pins between 5 volts and 0 at different frequencies. When he was doing this, the current consumption of this microcontroller was increasing and lowering. Okay, when outputs were set to 5 volts, higher currents were flowing through these resistors and higher current flew inside of this VCC pin. When all the output pins were set to 0, then no current was flowing through these resistors and a lower current was flowing inside of this microcontroller. And uh, then he was also monitoring the voltage on this VCC pin. He was monitoring the noise on the voltage of this uh, VCC pin. And theoretically, there should be no really difference in the noise uh, when you are switching uh, outputs at 10 kHz or 50 kHz or 100 kHz, theoretically. But you will see in the real measurement, there is something really interesting happening. But uh, I'm going to leave everything to Florian. He is going to explain in the next clip what is in the screenshot what he took during this measurement. And once this clip is finished, we will go back to some of the parts in uh, the video and I will explain them a little bit more. So now, First, watch this video and then I will explain a little bit more. Mm -hmm. So here you can see frequency 100 hertz. The outputs are switching on and off. So the, the blue uh, curve, that's the, the pin voltage, the output pin voltage. You can see it's high, low, high, low. Uh, so two volts per division. So it's Two, four, five volts, and zero, five, zero, five, zero, five, and you can see that the uh, voltage, the VCC voltage, follows inversely. So, when the outputs are switched on, there is some current flowing, which causes some voltage drop. Mm -hmm. And uh, really interesting is that you can calculate. All right, try to calculate some impedance or resistance in the ohm mm -hmm. from the. RMS voltage triple and the current, mm -hmm. and that's 0 0.4 ohms. And if you and remember, actually, yeah, if you remember the output impedance at 100 hertz is 1, 2, 3, 0 0.4 ohms. Mm -hmm. So that's really nice. Um, then at higher frequencies, at uh, 1.2 kilohertz, you can see the same effect, but there is already some ringing that appears directly after the switching. So these uh, beginning spikes in the beginning, I have drawn them here, you can see that as, as soon as the switching happens, there is some resonance that is triggered, and this resonance you see is damped, but it's damped very low, so it, there is quite some oscillation that goes on before mm -hmm. it disappears again. A good damping will just cause one overshoot and, mm -hmm. and uh, disappearing. If you have a high Q, then you will see these ringings like you do here. And it's 66 kilohertz, so you can see that each so switching... So even at this uh, 100 or 1 kilohertz, you can measure that you will have problems at 66 kilohertz. 
Yes. Mm -hmm. Because the, the edge, uh, of course, yeah. is a step, but the step contains all the frequencies nearly. It triggers the resonance, and the resonance rings. Wow. And the, the I didn't know peak, that. The big to big result in that case, the amplitude shows 27, but that's just the main, main, uh, the low frequency. The higher frequencies will be, as you see, is 20 millivolts per division, so it will be 20, 40, it will be already 80 millivolts, but just for the short, for the high frequencies. Okay, okay. and then as soon, of course, as we go into a higher frequency, then we can make it happen to trigger the oscillation more often because it's not disappeared when it's triggered again. The damping mm -hmm. could not, it did not have time to to, to damp it disappear. out and it's triggered, ah, okay. yeah, to disappear and it's triggered again and again and again and again. And then, high. Mm -hmm. then the, the noise is getting even higher. So here it's already 100 millivolts of, uh, of peak to peak. And if we make it more higher, the frequency, and eventually make it even higher and higher, eventually we can just find the resonance frequency of the resonant tank and just trigger a nice oscillation every time. Every time switching on, off, on, off, there is pushed energy into the oscillation at the right moment. It's not the perfect one. You can see here it could be probably even better here at 60. Six kilohertz. Six that's ne nearly a sine wave already, and that's already a uh, very high voltage. You can see two hundred wow. millivolts. Of, uh, Why of, they uh, don't teach us this at school? Tell me. Hmm? Why they don't teach us this at school? Because it's too much at once, I think. And very uh, nice. But picture. I think this this explains everything. It explains a lot, actually. Mm -hmm. I think you can make a nice course of that. <laughs> and this picture is also beautiful because it shows that the output voltage of the pin is, of course, following the the VCC. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So here I have set the zero point to the same. It's one volt per division in both cases, and you can already see that every time mm -hmm. the oscillation is triggered, the output voltage drops when it's switched on, and then wow. the other way around. That's very nice. Wow. So there is something really special going on at this 66 kilohertz frequency. When your processor, when your microcontroller, when your FPGA is running uh, something at this special frequency, it will generate much higher noise so it's quite important to actually know about these critical frequencies where exactly they are on your board what are the frequencies when your board uh, when your vcc pins will be experiencing these very high noises and that's exactly how this pdn uh, impedance can help you and now i'm quite sure you are getting uh, the idea of what we are going to talk about the first critical frequency is the peak which is here in this simulation we are not getting exactly the 60 kilohertz or 66 kilohertz you can see in this simulation it looks like the critical frequency would be like this is 10 20 around 30 kilohertz but on the real board the critical frequency is 66 kilohertz hmm but now the question is it's quite different so is this simulation really going to help me uh, simulation is not considering some other factors for example don't forget this board is connected through USB cable, then you don't know exactly what are the parameters of the power supply inside of the PC, which is powering your board. This is again not included in this simulation. However, you can actually measure this PDN impedance 
of your real board, of your real system. And when you measure it, this is how it looks. This is the green line is the measured real board, impedance of the real board. And you can see that this is 10 kilohertz, 20, 30, 40, 50, at 60 uh, kilohertz, there is this kind of peak. And this is telling us there will be problem with the noise. This peak which is here, that's exactly what we can see here in these measurements. A uh, little bit later, we will speak about how you can do the real measurements of your board. Uh, and uh, before we do that, I would like to go and explain uh, some other screenshots which are here in this uh, in this file because also some of the other things what Florian said are very, very interesting. I'm sure you have noticed that uh, Florian was talking about this graph. And uh, in this graph, we can actually see how high was the noise for different frequencies. So you can see for the 66 kilohertz, the noise was really, really high. For lower frequencies, the noise was really, really low. Now, have a look at this graph which is down here. This is the PDN impedance measured on the VCC pin. Can you see these similarities? This is very similar to what we can see here. It is flat, then there is this small hill, and there is this big peak and it goes down. It is flat, there is small hill, then there is, there is this big peak and it goes down. So once you know this PDN uh, impedance graph, then it will help you to understand how much noise you can get on specific pin for specific frequencies. Okay? Very, very useful. How is it possible? How is it possible that this graph knows what kind of noise we are going to see on our VCC pin? Or maybe a better question would be, um, what can we see actually in this graph? What is this graph about? And one of the ways how you can uh, look at this graph is that this graph is telling us how difficult it is going to be to deliver power into our VCC pin for different frequencies. Okay, so for example, for these frequencies which are here, it's going to be a little bit easier to deliver power into our VCC pin. For these frequencies which are here, it's going to be a little bit harder to deliver the power into our VCC pin. Why it is going to be harder? Because here is higher impedance. And now there is the word impedance. Impedance is quite... Um, uh, it's not easy to imagine the impedance. Uh, so uh, I asked people around how I could simply explain to everyone how they can imagine this impedance. I asked if I could uh, uh, say something like, um, could people imagine this impedance as a resistor connected in series in their power rails? Could people imagine this uh, as uh, different resistors for different frequencies, for example, here would be a little bit lower resistor connected in series in your power rail. Here would be a little bit bigger resistor connected in series with your power rail. So basically here would be a higher loss. And uh, everyone told me, no, no, do not explain this through resistors because impedance is not a resistor. 
So I'm not going to explain it this way, okay? Impedance are not, not resistors. Impedance is much more complicated thing. But I'm sure you get the idea, okay? So basically, in this, uh, for these frequencies, uh, the uh, power which is going to be delivered into your VCC pin is going to have higher loss. It means, for example, more voltage is going to be lost during uh, the uh, transfer from your power supply to your VCC pin. And uh, for example, when you have this higher loss, when you, when you lose higher voltage, it means the uh, power on the VCC pin is going to be much lower than the power on the power supply. And when, you're, uh, when the loss is high, when the drop is uh, uh, very high, voltage drop is very high, then basically uh, you are going to see higher noise on your power supply rail. Okay? So when in this peak you have higher loss, it means voltage is going to drop much deeper and it's going to make much higher noise on your power supply than, for example, in this place, which is here, where the loss is going to be a little bit lower, so there is going to be a little bit lower drop on power supply rail, and it's going to have a little bit less noise. And that's how you can imagine this graph is influencing the noise on your power rail. Let's go back to these screenshots, and uh, next what Florian was talking about was some ringing. He was talking about ringing, which is caused by uh, resonating. He was talking about some uh, resonance in our circuit. And to understand what he was talking about, we need to go back into our PDN uh, graph, this one which is here. By the way, this graph which is here, it is exactly the same graph which uh, which Florian measured here, but this graph which is here, it is measured, and this one which is here, it is a simulated graph for our circuit, okay? So when I'm speaking or when I'm talking about this graph, it is exactly the same graph as what Florian measured here, this green, and it is exactly the same graph what he has here in this spreadsheet. Just this graph it's real measurement. This one is from simulation. So, uh, as I explained, to understand what Florian was talking about when he was uh, speaking about ringing and uh, resona resonating and um, resonance in our board, in our circuit, in our power delivery, then we need to understand a little bit more about this graph, how this graph is actually created why there are these peaks, what is causing these peaks which are in this PDN impedance graph. And uh, I'm going to play a video from my call with Eric, and Eric is going to explain how you can actually imagine how this graph is created and uh, what we actually, uh, how we should actually look at our board, at the path between the power supply and the VCC pin. Because it's very important to understand that the path, the connection between your power supply and your VCC pin, it is not just a wire. It is something much, much more complicated. And this much, much more complicated is what creates this PDN graph. So here is the uh, clip from my call with Eric, where he's going to explain how you can build this graph by yourself. So I'm gonna grab a, a little pen. And so I'm gonna start over here and I'm gonna draw the, the pads of, um, uh, of the under the IC 
So here's the ground and here's the VCC pin. And mm -hmm. so we're going to be looking from those two points outward, right? And so we ask, okay, what are we going to see? So, and I'm just going to rough sketch some of the circuit element equivalents there. So we're going to have a little bit of inductance to the nearest uh, decoupling capacitor. And, um, and then we'll connect that to ground over here. Uh, let's see. And I think you had two of them, right? Didn't you have a like a hundred nanofarad? And so then there was a uh, one microfarad. And then there and then, was a ten microfarad. Okay, put a little bit of inductance there, and here's a ten microfarad. And then ferrite bead. Oh, on the VCC. Yes. Oh, I thought it was on the AVCC. Oh, uh, it it is on both. Ah, okay. So here's where your ferrite is, huh? Yes. Okay, so this will be the ferrite bead. Okay, and then um, uh, I guess that goes all the way back to uh, some capacitors and then the 5 volt rail? Yes, that okay. is the big filter. Okay, so we'll have some inductance and then we're going to have your big capacitors, a little inductor capacitors, and then here's the VRM and I'm just going to do this as a voltage source and uh, Thevenin equivalent to it. Okay, mm -hmm. so is that kind of the circuit? Yes. Okay, so at low frequency, so we're going to be sit always sitting over here and we're going to ask me, what's the impedance that I see looking in um, from this point here? So at low frequency, what do you think you would see? So we're going to look in a log log scale, frequency versus impedance and it's magnet log log scale. So at really, really low frequency, like DC, what's going to look like from the Just resistance system? of all the inductors and all the wires? Yeah. and. Uh, I think in your, so we're going to compare it to your simulation first. And in your simulation, didn't you put a value in for that resistor? Yeah, for your, yeah. And, and was that was that 3 ohms or 0.3 uh, ohms? I'm or? going to double check. So I put there uh, 0 0.5 ohm. 0 0.5, okay. So that's going to be uh, 0 0.5 ohms starting out at low frequency. Right. And at, at a high frequency, um, uh, what do you think we're going to see? Like very, so very high? Yeah, the highest frequency, gigahertz. What do you think we'll see looking from these paths Short here? Seat, uh, yeah, very high impedance because uh, um, uh, it's going to be kind of short circuit now for very, very, very high frequency. Well, it's the first thing that we're going to see is this inductor, and then we're going to ah. see this capacitor, and then we're going to see this inductor. And then we see this capacitor. And so we're going to see uh, the uh, 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 successive kind of LC circuits. And and each of them is going to have a different resonance, a different, um, uh, so they have a self resonance, but they also have a parallel resonance. Uh, and so at the highest frequency, we're probably going to see this inductor. And so I don't know where that is, because this inductor is part of the interconnect. It's the path getting from the pads on the, on the, um, uh, where we're doing the simulation from to where the nearest capacitor is. And, you know, just roughly, you know, it's, it's about, you know, 20 nanohenries per inch of path. And what do you think, maybe a quarter of an inch, maybe half an inch maybe of surface trace uh, in, in that loop uh, going from to the nearest capacitor? Would it be half an inch? Half an inch, I don't know. Half an inch? <laughs> okay. So maybe I'm in millimeters, so, uh, but I... Maybe. Oh, I'm I don't sorry. Know. <laughs> okay, so um, so this is this is uh, one nanohenry per millimeter. So if you had to guess, do you think maybe like I um, can measure it approximately. No, we don't. No, we're estimating. If you have to okay. measure, you're doing too much work. We just okay. want a rough estimate. We want to know is it is it five millimeters? Is it fifty millimeters? Um, okay, so let's say 10, 8 10 millimeters. millimeters. Ten millimeters. Okay, so that's ten nanohenry. So this is ten nanohenries. Okay, and so at and, and so a quick estimate here, at, um, at one gigahertz, the impedance of ten nanohenries. So one gigahertz, um, let's see, that's uh, ten to the nine. There's a two pi in front, so that's six times ten to the nine, times uh, ten to the minus eight, right? And so what's that? That's sixty ohms. So, and that's going to be increasing in frequency, uh, in increasing impedance with the frequency. So at the high end, we're going to have something like this from that inductor. And, uh, and then looking outward, we're going to see, you uh, know, how this. Did, uh, okay, so sorry. how did you come up with this? 
okay. So the impedance, the impedance of an inductor is omega L. And that's 2 pi times the frequency times the L. And so the frequency, so I'm saying at a gigahertz, mm -hmm. uh, just to pick a number okay. uh, at the high end, at a okay. gigahertz, that's 10 to the yeah, 9 now. hertz, okay. 6 pi, uh, 6 uh, times that, and, and 10 nanohenries is 10 to the minus 8 henries. And so if you keep everything in hertz and henries, then um, impedances and ohms. And so this is um, 60 ohms. Okay, does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, and it's just rough guessing. So here's at a gigahertz, at one gigahertz, uh, you know, 60 ohms. And why we and, are looking only at this last inductor for the highest Oh, we're going to look at them, all of them, but we're going to kind of work our way in from the outside edge, from the lowest frequency I can do in my head, the highest frequency I can do in my head, in my head. the in-betweens, that's where the resonance, the resonances are. And we have to kind of, you know, I'm not going to do a lot of work here, but just kind of roughly guess. Okay, um, then, this, but uh, yeah. why for the highest frequency we have not included yeah. everything, only the last loop? Ah, okay, very good. So, at really high frequency, uh, what's an inductor look like? If you just look at an inductor, and if we were to plot up here, the uh, impedance versus frequency for an inductor, what does that look like? That curve, a log-log scale. Mm, I have no idea. <laughs> okay, okay, that's okay. So, um... It, it, so here is basically the relationship between the impedance. This is in the frequency domain. Ah, the okay, so based on this, I should be able to figure that out. Yeah, and so it's <laughs> linear with frequency. And so the impedance of an inductor increases linearly okay. with frequency, right? It, higher impedance, higher the frequency. Resists the change in current. Um, and, and a capacitor, so that's, a, that's a, um, uh, an inductor. Let me do that as an L here. And if we were to do a capacitor, what would the impedance of an ideal capacitor look like at at first at low frequency? What do you think a capacitor is at low frequency? High or low impedance? Uh, for low frequencies, a capacitor yeah. has a high impedance. Yeah, and as we go up in frequency, what do you think it's going to do? Uh, it will go lower. Yeah, and so an ideal capacitor is going to drop like this. Ideal capacitor. And so I look at my circuit over here. And I see, okay, I've got an inductor and a capacitor. The re and I have a, another inductor after it, over here. I'm so embarrassed. <laughs> but I left everything in the uh, video. So you can see I learn a lot. Mm, it's been some time. I'm, I've been out of the school. Now it's my excuse <laughs> why I didn't know everything. But I actually learn a lot. After we finished the call, I had a look, I searched on internet and uh, I refreshed what I remember about a lot of these things. And that's what I will explain in next part of this video. So you don't have to go uh, to internet and search for everything. I will explain a little bit more about this graph, what we can see here about these equations. I will explain everything, okay? So what can we see here? Down here, this is the graph what we are going to create. It is basically this uh, PDN graph, but uh, we are trying to figure out the graph by ourselves. And uh, from this uh, short eight minute video, I learned three huge things. So first, what I learned from these eight minutes of call with Eric is that when I see this kind of uh, circuit, it is actually important. Until now, I knew that power delivery is always uh, kind of uh, explained through these circuits, but I, I didn't really thought like it's super important. It is, okay? So when you see this kind of circuit, uh, this is the way how you need to look at your power delivery and the power delivery in your circuit. You have to look through this uh, because it's very, very important. It will help you to understand uh, what is uh, actually happening when your power is delivered to specific pins. 
And um, that's the second big, big mistake what I have been doing for a long, long time. I was looking at power delivery the wrong way. I was always thinking about the power being delivered from this uh, uh, power source, which is here, and I was looking at the power delivery always this way. But notice, when we were creating this graph, we are actually looking at the power delivery the other way around. <clears throat> we are looking at this VCC pin and how this VCC pin see the power being delivered from the power supply. Okay? Very, very important. You have to look from the VCC pin this direction, how the power is delivered. And the third very, very big mistake what I have been doing was that I really underestimated influence of the inductance of the trucks. I, I always thought like oh, there is just five millimeters of a truck. Who cares how this can influence the power delivery? However, even very short uh, track has inductance and this inductance can influence the power delivery a lot. So three big things what I learned in these eight minutes is this kind of circuit for power delivery is very important. I was always looking wrong at the power delivery. You have to look from the pin this direction. And the inductance of the tracks, even very small inductance inside of the capacitors, non-ideal components, is very, very important because this small inductance is going to influence the power delivery in your ports. To continue, we need to go through some basics. So everyone understands the characteristics of the capacitor and inductors and the combination of these two. And um, I'm going to do this in next part of this video. Let me know. Let me know if you find this kind of video useful, if you learn something new and if you would like to see the second part of this video leave comments. If you like this video, don't forget to press like button. If you would like to see next part of this video and you don't want to miss it, don't forget to subscribe. I would like to thank you very much for watching and uh, see you next time. Bye.